Hi, I'm Boxall. This is Graham. Behind the camera we have Gage. The collaborators on video 3, which is a description of ecological sites or range sites in Montana used for the NRSM 102 class. We'd like to thank the Montana State Teaching and Learning Committee for providing the funds to make these videos and we hope they help you learn more about Montana range plants. So the purpose of this video is to discuss the eight basic range sites or ecological sites located in Montana. There are approximately 63 that are recognized by technical manuals, but for training purposes in this class we are just going to discuss eight basic range sites. So the determination of range site is ultimately going to be used for management. So what we'd like to do is to compare similar sites as to their productivity, their erosion potential, how they've been managed in the past, and then what we can do with that in the future. But before we can do all that, we have to determine the basic characteristics of the site. Then we have to determine the vegetation then we will determine what range condition it's in and from there we can decide what type of management options we would have. Range sites are kinds of rangelands that differ in plant composition or production due primarily to moisture availability, soil variances, and topography. These are synonymous with ecological sites. On this diagram is a topographic layout of different range sites. For training purposes we divide those into three different groups. Group 1 range sites, those that are located in the lower left portion of this diagram, are those places that receive additional moisture. So if you stand at the bottom of a hill and you see that water collects there you probably be in a group 1 range site. So in those we have sub-irrigated and overflow sites. Group 2 sites are those ecological sites that have soils at least 20 inches deep and do not receive any additional moisture. Those would be located on the top of the hill or in the upper right hand portion of this picture. Group 3 sites are those that have soils that are less than 20 inches deep. Usually those are located on hill slopes with a high amount of rock outcropping and would typically be shallow or very shallow sites. This site would be considered a group one sub-irrigated site because it has groundwater within 20 to 40 inches of the surface part of the growing season. You can see the rushes and the number of plants present that require high moisture. So this would be an example of a sub-irrigated site that is in excellent ecological condition. All right, we're here on Drinking Horse Trail to show you another ecological site. If you look up on the hillside, gauge, pan up there, and you can see that this place collects moisture from other parts in the landscape. So this would be a type one ecological site, which really only leaves us two choices, a sub-irrigated or an overflow. Since we do not see any plants that are associated with a sub-irrigated site, in other words aquatic type plants, this would be an overflow site. In terms of telling the range condition, let's just take a look around Gage. Here's Canada Thistle, this is Snowberry, this is Leafy Spurge, Wild Rose, Smooth Brome, and Kentucky Bluegrass. So most of these plants are introduced therefore the ecological condition of this site would be poor even though there's lots of vegetation and it produces a lot of total biomass the plant community is nowhere close to what should be here so this would be a poor condition ecological site that would be called an overflow we are on the road to the Madison Buffalo Jump State Park we are here to examine a sandy ecological site. So the first thing we first step we take is we dig a soil pit and this soil right here is over 20 inches deep so we know we're in category 2. 
The next thing we do is texture the soil. So this thing does make a ball. However, if I try to make a ribbon, you can see that there's no ribbon at all. You can't even make one less than a quarter inch long. So this would be considered a loamy sand. Now let's try to determine what range condition it's in. In order to do that, we need to assess the vegetation. If we look at the vegetation on this site, we can see that we've got a little bit of blue bunch wheatgrass, maybe less than 10%. A lot of Japanese brome, so we can see there's quite a bit of that. There's a lot of threadleaf sedge. Notice this tall shrubby plant is yucca. That's on this site. If you notice this grass is prairie sand reed. That's another good indicator of a sandy rain site. And then Ruth trilobata or skunk bush is also on this location. So if we turn to our lab manual on page 38 and look at the 15 to 19 inch precip zone, this area gets roughly 16 inches of precip between 14 and 16, but we'll use the 16 inch marker. There should be 20% blue bunch wheatgrass, 10% mountain brome, 5% needle grass, 10% other decreaser grasses, and then some decreaser uh, forbs, as well as thick spike or western wheatgrass. So since we don't have a lot of those plants present, we know that we're not in excellent condition. It isn't dominated by introduced, such as Japanese brome, so we know we're not in poor condition. Therefore, we know we have to be somewhere in the middle. And this area would probably be classified in fair ecological condition or fair range condition because there still are a number of native plants found on this site. So we've dug our soil pit and you can see that this is approximately 22 inches deep. So now we know that the soil is at least 20 inches and we're on a site where the water runs off. It does not collect and run in. So we know that we're in group two range sites. So now we're determining the soil texture of this site. So you take a piece of soil moisten it and see how long of a ribbon you can make. And if you look at my hands you can see that this site produces a ribbon that's over two inches long and it's smooth. Therefore this would be a silty clay soil texture and since this area is on a steep hill this site would be termed a thin silty rain site or thin silty ecological site. So I'd say right in here we probably have about 50% Idaho fescue and about 30% blue bunch wheatgrass. So what would you conclude would be the ecological condition of this site? Um, of those four categories. Poor, fair, good, and excellent. Good. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. So this is a, a this is an example of a good conditioned rangeland. It's not excellent, but there's a lot of native plants in here. There's some introduced, but actually this thing's in pretty good shape. Good job. Hi, we're on the Drinking Horse Trail to give you a demonstration of another type of range site or ecological site, one of the eight. If you notice, this is a nice uh, smooth ridge. You've already seen a shot of it. We dug a soil pit. This shovel is 25 inches up to the, the shoulder of this thing, and the soil is deeper than that. The next thing we'll do is we'll texture the soil. For that, I've got my assistant, Graham. Come on over here and let's try to figure out what the soil texture is on this one. Good, so how big of a ribbon is that? Yep. Is it over two inches? Yeah. Easily over yeah. two inches. It's got a little bit of grit, isn't it? You can feel just a tiny bit of sand, but mostly it's kind of greasy, isn't it? Yeah. So, this would be a silty clay. So, now we're going to determine the range condition. If most of the plants here are introduced and they're not native, 
what do you expect the rain condition to be? Poor, fair, good, or excellent? Poor. Yeah, this is an example of a poor condition rain site. So we're still on the same silty rain site. We just moved up the hill a little bit. And I just want to show you an example of what the same ecological site would look like, but in a little different condition. So you notice up here we have a lot more Idaho fescue, blue bunch wheatgrass, which is what the manual says should be on this site. There's a little bit of leafy spurge, white sage, but for the most part, there's a lot more predominant plants that are native. Therefore, this would probably be considered to be in good ecological condition because it has a much higher component of native plants. We're on Drinking Horse Trail looking at ecological sites. Here we have an example of a group two range site where the water runs off the site. The soils are well over 20 inches, so we dug a soil pit here. The soil texture on the site has a ribbon that's well over two inches and it's not gritty and it's not sticky. Therefore, this would be a clay, a clay E range site, clay soil texture. If we want to determine the range condition, the low-lying grass is mostly Kentucky bluegrass with lots of white sage. There's some bed straw in here, arrow leaf balsam root, and of course this giant grass which is basin uh, wild rye. So basin wild rye is indicative of high condition or high ecological condition. Therefore, the, this site would probably be rated as a either high good or low excellent range condition. So we're at a higher elevation on the Drinking Horse Trail. This would be an example of another range site. So this particular site has soils that are less than 20 inches deep. So that would make it in group three. And our choices in there are either shallow and very shallow. I've dug a soil pit and it's, at, it's over 10 inches but less than 20 inches. So that would make this a shallow range site. If Gage, if you would pan around a little bit and look at the species composition. So we've determined that we've got a shallow range site. What are the dominant plants in here? You can see that we've got blue bunch wheat grass, prairie june grass. There's a little bit of western in here a little bit of Muhlenbergia, quite a bit of uh, hairy golden aster. So most of these plant communities are native, but you notice there's a lot less production. So this is one of the reasons why we have to know the ecological site, because it's not fair to compare this site with an overflow site that produces five to 10 times as much vegetation. So it produces a lot less because of the restrictions due to all the uh, cobble and, and rock in the soil. But this would oh. be an example of a range site that is in fairly good condition. There are a few introduced. It's not an excellent, but it, there's still quite a few native plants in here. So here's blue bunch wheatgrass right in here. So you can see that's probably the dominant grass. So this site which is a shallow range site would probably be in good condition. All right, we're up here on the higher elevations of the Drinking Horse Springs, looking at another range site or ecological site. As you can see, there's all kinds of outcropping, lots of rock very close to the surface. I tried to dig a soil pit and I couldn't even get it more than 10 inches. So this would be an example of a very shallow range site. What condition is it in? If we look at the species composition, there's blue bunch wheatgrass, Idaho fescue, June grass, and a lot of arrow leaf balsam root. So this particular range site, even though it's low productivity and a very shallow site, is in excellent condition because almost all these plants are native. They should be here. There has been very little disturbance on this site However, there is a little leafy spurge scattered around here. If we look at the soil texture, we can see that this thing makes a, a ribbon that's maybe between one and two inches. 
so that would make it more of a uh, loam and it's pretty slick so that would make it a silty loam so this particular site is a shallow ecological site in excellent condition